Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this week I've got something kind of obscure and fun to work on that you don't see every day. This is the GCE Vectrex. This is a video game console that came out around 1982, 1983. It was really short-lived and it's pretty interesting when you compare it to other systems from that time. What's cool about it is that the monitor is built into it and it's actually a vector monitor. It's not like a standard raster monitor or a CRT that you, know, you might be familiar with. So these were pretty cool and interesting at the time because they had really sharp, bright graphics, like very crisp. And so that distinguished it from other games of its time that used a raster monitor. So this Vectrex here doesn't really work. Um, it has like horizontal and vertical collapse. So when you power it on, like the image will hold, but then it'll eventually just kind of fall apart on itself. So sometimes that's due to faulty capacitors. And so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this thing completely apart, replace all the capacitors on the power board and on the CPU board, and let's see if that does the trick, and maybe that'll help us to get a stable image again. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, so taking the shell off is actually quite simple. You've got five screws. You've got two in the handle here, two down here in the bottom, and then one in the center. Uh, the one in the center is very long, and then the two over here are kind of intermediate, and then the small ones are up here at the top. Once that's done, this just comes right off over here. And so now you can see the, the power board, and then this is the actual Vectrex itself, and uh, of course you've got the tube and all the high voltage stuff here. So I'm gonna start by just discharging the monitor, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and discharge the monitor here, and you can see that I have a screwdriver, and I've got an alligator clip connecting that screwdriver to a chassis ground. And on this case, there's one right over here on the top of the tube. So before I start this, I just wanna say, you know, don't try this at home. Uh, working on CRTs can be dangerous because of the high voltage. So just make sure that you know what you're doing or you're working with a professional before you do anything like this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go underneath this anode cap over here. And these can be rather sticky, like you can see that the the plastic gets kind of goopy and yucky as a function of time. And all you're trying to do is make contact with the metal anode that's right there where the tube is, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And um, you connect that to ground, and then that just helps to discharge any remaining high voltages that are left in the tube. Some tubes discharge rapidly, or they have bleeder resistors that allow you to discharge um, on their own. Uh, others do not. and Generally speaking, the older the monitor is, the less likely there is something like that. So this one, though, seems to be fully discharged. I didn't hear any crackle or spark. Um, sometimes you'll hear that, sometimes you don't. But in this case, there wasn't one. You'll notice I'm also wearing gloves, and that's just because this thing is kind of, you know, 40 years old and full of dust and such. Okay, so yeah, everything is, is discharged. There's no sparks. So we're going to go ahead now and take the anode cap off. Okay, there we go. We're also gonna go ahead and carefully lift up over here. This removes it from the neck, the neck board. Also gonna just cut this little zip tie which holds it in place. That's something I can always replace later. There we go. All right, and so from here, we're gonna just continue disassembling. All right, so the power board is mostly disassembled. I just uh, wanted to show you what I've done so far. So after removing the neck board, um, what I did was I just removed two screws that were over here. And then this little grounding lug is attached to a post down here at the bottom, which uh, attaches it to the tube. Once all of that is free, you can actually take the board out and have a look at it. And uh, of course, there's still more attachments that are here, but, um, but they're mostly plugged in. So what I've been doing is just taking photos as I go and then disconnecting the relevant cables. And I would suggest you do the same thing because there's a lot of connections here and it's very easy to get confused about what you're seeing. But basically we're just trying to get this thing as out as separate as possible so that we can work on it. You don't necessarily have to completely take it apart, but 
you can get most of it out like how we have it right now, that's pretty decent. All right, so all I have left to completely disconnect the power board from everything else are these four wires. Unfortunately, two of them are the exact same color. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just mark one with some red permanent ink. And I'm also gonna mark the board with red permanent ink as well. So this helps me figure out exactly where they go later on when I'm finished. And just a triple check, I'm just gonna take a quick picture of what I've done here. And now let's go ahead and desolder these last connections. Oh, that was close. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. So those boards are now disconnected and let's go ahead and recap this board. Okay, so I'm just about done with the power board and as I was finishing, I realized that there are two capacitors hidden underneath the absolutely massive heatsink, which really is annoying. So I had to go ahead and uh, unscrew that. Uh, when you're doing that, keep in mind that these two voltage regulators right here, the one over here uh, closer to me, the minus five voltage regulator, has a mica insulator on the back. So it uses the heat sink to cool down, but I think that this large portion here is actually the hot portion. So it can't touch anything metal or you'll short out the regulator. So just make sure that that mica insulator stays in place. So anyhow, these are the final two capacitors that need to be replaced. And uh, thankfully it's straightforward. One of them is bipolar, which means you can place it in any orientation. And then this guy over here is a standard electrolytic capacitor. So I'm gonna replace them, but instead of putting them here, I'm gonna actually replace them so that they are on the opposite side. So that way, if this system ever needs to be serviced again in the future, all you need to do is just work on them from the back instead of having to work on them uh, like I did now where I had to take off the heat sink. The other thing to mention too, is that I went over all of these capacitors and I actually applied solder to the top and to the bottom. Normally you don't need to do that, but with this console, from what I have read, um, they're, they're through hole, but not always, or not so, they're not so great. So sometimes you'll apply solder to the bottom and the connection to the top might not actually be there, might not actually be made. So just to cover your bases, just apply, you know, solder from the bottom like you saw in the video, but then off camera, I went back and I, I made sure that all of them were soldered on the top as well. And I made sure all of them had enough height so that I could go back in there and, and do that. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace these two caps and then most of the work is gonna be finished. All right, so I'm down to four more capacitors left to be replaced and three out of the four are thankfully right over here. So I'm not gonna bother with uh, taking the board out for these. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them out um, and replace them right here. The final one is located right over here. So for that last one, I'm just gonna take the board off um, enough so that I can access it remove that one cap, and then call it a day. Um, all right, so let's get these final caps out of here. Okay, so I've got the Vectrex partially reassembled here, and I've been using it for about an hour or so just to see how it behaves and if it remains stable. And so far, it seems to be fine. So I've been able to play a couple rounds of Mindstorm. It hasn't done anything where the image collapses in on itself or acts weird or anything like that. So I think overall that, you know, the capacitors were the reason why this thing was acting up. And now that it has all new ones, it's behaving stable and normal again. So, so yeah, aside from you know, replacing the capacitors on the Vectrex, there's other things you can do to make it better. As you guys can hear, there's a lot of audio interference that um, you hear on the Vectrex. That's pretty normal. And that has to do with the way that the audio circuit was designed. And nowadays there are modifications that can make that a lot quieter. And that's something I'd like to revisit in a future video. But yeah, that's it for this particular video. So if you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every Friday. And if you want something repaired or modified for yourself, you can also reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.